Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. And your praise is Hallelujah, 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 everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be joining us from. We believe that every one of us, you are joining us from all over the world this morning. I'm so glad to see us here to the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, everyone. We are so glad that you are here. My name is Adekemi Adedeji, and I'm the Ministry of the Head of Divine Revelations Ministry. And I'm the host of this meeting. I'm the one hosting you today. Praise the name of the Lord. We are so excited that you are able to join us for the first edition of Coffee, Worship, and Bible Study to the glory of God. I hope you have your cup of coffee ready. I have mine ready. And I hope you have your Bibles, of course, more importantly, beside you, ready for today's uh, meeting and what God is said to do in our midst. I'm going to be running us through some few instructions before we move on. Please kindly drop your email address with me on the chat. Don't drop it uh, for everyone because of privacy's sake. Just drop your email address directly to me on the chat. You can change from everyone to uh, direct. By the grace of God, we like to share some things with you. That's why we are requesting for your email address. All right, so we'll be opening this meeting with a brief prayer. But before then, uh, we'll be having today, we'll be having a, a time of prayer, uh, a time of worship, and then we'll be having um, a time of uh, uh, learning from the Word of God. Today, we'll be having two speakers to the glory of God, even this morning. Hallelujah. And then. Um, Immediately after that, we'll be having the question and answer time. And because we'll be trying to stay within the confinement of our time, we'll be making everything snappy to the glory of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So this morning, I'll be having a virtual assistant assisting me this morning. Sister Tai Wanima Shawn, she'll be assisting me, so she's on the chat. If you have anything, any information you, you need, you can actually speak with her. She's on the chat right now, Sister Taita. Let me see her name on this um, Zoom now. She's uh, she's logged in as um, Elizabeth Animasha. I think she's off now. She'll come back. It's probably the network. So um, she will be assisting me this morning as my virtual assistant. Praise the name of the Lord. So without, wa without wasting much of our time, because we know every one of us, we are all busy, we'll go straight into uh, the opening prayer. This morning, I'll be calling on Brother Moses Animashaw. He's a teenage counselor and a member of the advisory council in the Four Square Gospel Church where he worships. And he will be taking us in the brief opening prayer. He's also a member of this ministry to the glory of God. So, br Brother Moses, I'm going to be spotlighting you now. You'll be leading us in the opening. You're actually a co-host, so I, I believe you can spotlight yourself. I'm not sure why I can't okay, make me because I'm pinned. Let me unpin myself so that I will spotlight you. Let me see. Okay, you are there. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> All right, over to you, sir. I'm going to mute myself now. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for a wonderful day you have made. This is the day you have made, and we'll be glad and rejoice in it because it is your doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. Lord, we worship you because you have given us the privilege even to see to. the song we have listened to, come and manifest yourself in the name of Jesus. In a great and mighty way, beyond our expectations, beyond our preparations, Lord, we pray, you'll be coming your glory. You will fill every location we are with your power in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, we decree and we declare by your mercy, let your glory tabernacle, even in this gathering, in the name of Jesus. Like in the day of old, when your glory filled the tabernacle, that it was so great that even the minister could not minister. After that order, Lord, we decree, let your glory 
fill this program mightily this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we commit every vessel you have prepared into your hands that, Lord, in the name, they will speak as an oracle in the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree that you will give them utterance from the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come against every spirit of buying and selling, every spirit of destruction, every spirit that may want to steal what you have for us today. Lord, we bind them this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, we decree by your mercy that all of us present in this meeting this morning shall be blessed of you in the name of Jesus. And your name shall be glorified in Jesus. Mighty name we are praying. Amen. Just be clear. Amen. This morning and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's begin to cover many grounds. Let's begin to pray in other tongues and cover many grounds because the time is short. Li brat halade shake a lebron to kill ya. Li kotilia da bende kati shatalada branda lade. Le mokotilia da branda de shatalada. Li pratili shatele de brende katekade. Lord, we pray that you take charge in the name. That is all we are saying, that Father Lord, take charge in the name of Jesus. We can't do it without your spirit, Lord. Father Lord, take charge from this moment even to the end. Lord, take charge in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, take charge in the name of Jesus. That all the glory shall be returned unto you. Thank you, Almighty Father, because you always hear us. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. We declare it in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let only you, Lord, be seen. Let no man be seen, but only you. And let the blessings be for your people. For in Jesus' matchless name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Brother Moses. That was a powerful, powerful one. Very short and very powerful. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Right now, we are going to be going into the time of worship. But before I call up the worship ministers, I'm going to be playing their video profile. We asked for our minister's profile. We wanted them to give us a short one because of our time. So this is not actually the full profile of these ministers, but you know, God himself, we announce them through the administration. So right now, I'm going to be playing the video profile of our worship leaders uh, in the person of uh, the Yemis. Adesola Adaimi and Ogeneruiz Adaimi are an inspiring gospel duo demonstrating the power of faith and love in their music. Their harmonious voices create a profound connection with their audience, touching hearts worldwide. In addition to their live performances, they reach a global audience through their YouTube channel, The Yemis, sharing their powerful performances and thought-provoking content. They serve as beacons of light, using their musical gifts to bring comfort, joy, and spiritual renewal to those in need. Their journey as a power couple, artists, and devoted parents exemplifies the transformative power of faith, love, and the impact of music on the human spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, join me with a clapping ovation to welcome the Yemis. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank you, Jesus. We've come to lift your name and I. We just want to thank you, Jesus. For you are holy, you are worthy. We just want to thank you, Jesus. You are holy. Oh. We just want to thank you, Jesus. We just want to thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all the things that you have done for us. Thank you for January, February, March, April, May, June, July. We are here, Father, standing right here before you, God. It has only been you all the way that has brought us this far. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Holy. 
is the Lord God. He is the Lord God. He is the Lord God. Most holy is the
just thank God. From the depth of your heart, can you just praise God? Can you praise Him? Can you praise Him? Ule kubaria tobele toshi vele kande brother yada bali. Ena kusa. There's somebody watching right now. There's a there's a healing going on in your within right now. It's your leg. It's your leg, and that healing is coming on it right now. The healing hand of God is coming on that leg. You feel that sudden pain in that leg. It's your right leg. It's your right leg. Matter of fact, it's your right knee. But the Lord is touching that knee right now in the name of Jesus, and everything is coming back to order in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. For keeping. For keeping. Praise God. We just appreciate it. For lifting me. Thank you, Jesus. 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 glory to Jesus honor to Jesus I just wanted to go on and just worship the name of the Lord God is worthy to be praised he's the king of glory the Lord strong and mighty the God that clothes himself with honor and majesty the one who sits above the circle of the head the one who was and he's and is to come the king of glory the Lord God almighty the merciful God the king of glory oh Lord we raise you high in our prayer Praises Lord, Mazu Katala Bradosha, Lembreke Taili Bragotosi Kataya Brada. Lift up your voices and worship the King of Glory. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just want to honor you, Lord. Father, we just want to give you praise for you are good and your mercy endures forever. You are worthy to be praised, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to bless the name of the Lord for that powerful powerful worship section by the Yemis. Glory to God. It's just as if we should not stop. In fact, I had to, you know, uh, reduce the video because <laughs> they want to, they, they gave us uh, something uh, longer than that, but because of our time. Hallelujah. I pray for you, the Yemis, that the Lord will take you global in the name of Jesus. The Lord will open international doors for you. Your voices will not go down. Your voices will not be trapped. You will sing for Jesus all over the world. And the Lord will remember you for good in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, this dynamic couple, for blessing us so much. That was a powerful, powerful worship section. If you agree with me, type hallelujah in the chat. If you agree with me, say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So now we're going to be going into the first uh, uh, message for today. This, I'm going to be calling on the first speaker. Uh, I'm going to see if Pastor Felix is now here. The Lord is glorified. You know, we've been uh, having a um, technical each, but you know, God is on the throne. He's having his way. Let me see. Pastor Felix is not back. Pastor Felix is not back. So I'm going to be, uh, for one reason, uh, for a genuine reason, our second speaker is not able to be here physically today. So he sent us his me uh, message. So after him, I'm, I'm going to be calling on uh, Minister Lumide now because Pastor Felix is still off. Pastor Felix. If you are there, Pastor Felix, please kindly let me know when you are around. But for now, I'm going to be calling on the first speaker for today, which is Minister Olumide. He's not here right now, but he has sent us his apologies because unavoidably he has to be away. Okay, so I'm going to be playing his video very soon. But before then, I'm going to share his um, uh, profile, uh, video profile. Bear with me, please. I'm going to be sharing in a sec. Okay. I'm going to be sharing Minister Lumide's profile. All right. So, Sister Taiwo, let me know if the audio is fine. Just unmute. I'm going to play it right now. Is Akaze. The, is, is the audio fine, Sister Taiwo? Could you hear that? Yes, ma. Okay. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma. Much. Kindly mute, but thank you. Akaze. 
Olumide Obiogan. Okesola is a lover of God, teacher of God's word, encourager and counselor. He has a burning God-given passion and calling to help people make the right choices in their relationships, marriage, finance and career. He offers online and offline counseling for youths, singles and married couples on diverse issues of life, using the Bible as a strong and sure foundation. He has an online ministry on the Facebook, YouTube and Instagram platforms called Life Issues with Akes, where he has made lots of life transforming videos on diverse topics in relationships, marriage, finance and career. Ladies and gentlemen, join me with a clapping ovation to welcome Minister Olumid Okesola. And um, I'm so glad to uh, have uh, been chosen to speak to you today about uh, a very important uh, topic for us as Christians. Yeah, um, it's great to have you. And I hope uh, that as we share the word of God together today, um, we will be blessed. And the word of God will um, direct us to put our house in order and put you know, ourselves aright as we prepare for his coming. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, I was asked to uh, speak about end time events and what things to expect. End time events and what things to expect. Um, now, are we really in the end times? You know, people have asked and discussed and argued about this particular question for so long. Are we really in the end times? You know, now I must say, because I have a very short time to, uh, uh, to, to speak, but I would have said something about it. I must say that we are in the end times, and I'm going to show you why I said so. I'm going to show you as we go into the scriptures that we are in the end times, because we must understand that we are in the end times for us to even take um, what I'm going to say serious. We must, first of all, realize that we are in the end times. The end times that the Bible spoke about, the end times that were spoken by so many uh, uh, writers of the Bible, or writers of the of the books of the Bible, they are those things are being made manifest. And um, as we go into the scriptures, uh, we will see. So, like I said, a topic that I have been asked to speak on is end time events and what to expect, what more to expect. So, I'm going to just. Um, uh, I'm going to just uh, um, take this message or short uh, exhortation uh, in two parts. You know, the first part is signs of the end times. We want to prove to ourselves that the end times is here. That's the first one. And then the second one is what must we do to be prepared? If we understand the end times is here, we are in the end times, what must we do to be prepared? So those are those the two things I'm going to speak about in the short time I have. And I pray that as we continue, God will reach out to us in Jesus' name. I just want to pray that by the mercy of God, as you hear the word of God this, mo um, this morning, the Lord will minister to you. The Lord will minister to every one of us. And our lives will not remain the same in Jesus' name. Yes, so now, are we in the end times? Of course, yes. What are the signs of the end times? I want to take us to uh, Matthew chapter 24. I'm going to read. Uh, a number of verses there, Matthew 24, verse 3 to 14. Mm, I'm reading from New Living Translation, so um, just just follow me. Now it says, Later Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will all this happen? What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Verse 4, Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Messiah. They will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars. But don't panic. Yes, these things must take place. But the end won't follow immediately. Verse 7. Nation will go to war against nation. And kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in many parts of the, of the world. But all this is only the first of the bad things with more to come. Verse 9. Then you will be, then you will be arrested, persecuted and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are my followers. And many will turn away from me and betray and hate each other. 
and many false prophets will appear and will deceive many we appear and deceive many people. Twelve. Sin will be rampant everywhere. Take note of that. And the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Verse 14, which is the final verse in this cell. For now. You see, and the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hate and then the end will come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, like, quickly, so as not to take much uh, more time. Are we in the end times? Yes, we are. What are the signs? This is our Lord Jesus Christ speaking here. Disciples were asking him that uh, uh, what because they have been hearing Jesus speak about the end times, that the end will come. So it was, I mean, they were they were they they, they wanted to know what would be the signs of the end time. And Jesus Christ gave it to them, and he has also given it to us. You know, he said, number one, there will be wars, rumors of wars. I'm sure you know. If you are, I mean, if you are a teenager or an adult, you will know that, you know, wars have been, wars have really, really been for so many years, for so many decades. So, war, you know, of the war in, uh, in um, between Russia and Ukraine, which is the most recent one, we've had so many wars even before now. You know, so there will be wars, rumors of wars. We see that in verse 6 of where we just went. It's a nation will rise against nation, you know. That is uh, uh, in verse 7. Nation will rise against nation. Russia goes up against Ukraine. And they have been at it for over a year and a half thereabouts now. You know, um, there are uh, famines. It says famines, earthquakes. You know, famines, earthquakes. You know, natural disasters. Natural disasters. In recent times, we've had earthquakes. We've had earthquakes. We've had uh, hurricanes. I mean, they have so many funny names. Hurricane Katrina. You know, so many of them. All these, Jesus Christ said, will be the signs of the end times. You know? Like you see that in verse uh, 7. Then, also verse 9, you see that we talk about persecution of Christians. Jesus Christ said, look, they will persecute you. They will persecute me. Persecute in what sense? They will... They will, uh, 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 when we don't want to dance to the tunes of the world, to the people of the world, they will oppose us. They will reframe us up. They may not give us what is due to us because we are not dancing to their tunes. Because we are not behaving the way that they would want us to behave or the way they behave. Jesus Christ said there will be persecution. It's been happening. It's been happening. If you walk or you're into business, if you don't want to give bribe, it is going to be very difficult for you to get some contracts in many places. That is part of the persecution. If you are in an office, you know, let me not, but let me not just go uh, because of time. Let me save time. He also says that some will turn away from the faith. Verse 10. He said some will turn away from the faith. You see people who have been Christians before and then because of the challenges that they face, because of the challenges that they face, he decided that, look, uh, I mean, to help with Christianity, God, stay your own. Let me just do my own. <laughs> you know, because of the challenges they face, because of the persecution they face, you know. So that is that. And then also, it's, uh, Christ also told us that in in where we just read, He says what well, He said there will be emergence of false prophets and messiahs. You see that in verse eleven and verse twenty four, or where we are. Uh, I mean, of, of of our text, verse eleven and verse twenty four. He said false prophets will rise, messiahs where they will say, "Oh, I'm Jesus." I'm your Messiah. I'm the one who is who you have been expecting. You know, uh, in those days there was people, the people that you call uh, Jesus of Wimbo, You know, things like that. You know, so uh, um, the Bible also says in verse twelve, it says sin will become rampant. It will become very popular. We know in our times now sin is very popular. It's very common. It's very common amongst us. It's very common, you know, in the world, even in the church. Just coming to the church, you know. And it says in that same verse, it says, the love of men will wax cold. The love of men will wax cold. Many of us Christians who used to serve God with all our heart, we don't do so anymore. Many of us Christians who used to go out and witness, even, even when it's not the day, or even when it's not evangelism day, we don't do that anymore. We don't do that anymore. So these are the signs of the end time. I mean, when you look at these signs, you find out that they are here. They have been here. Not even, they are not just coming. They have been here. So it tells us that we are in the end times. So now, 
without much ado, if we are in the end times, what must we do to be prepared? I think that's, that, that's the most important thing. If we have established from the Bible and from what you see all around us that uh, we are in the end times, what must we now do? What must we now do? Now, what must we now do? What we must do is that first of all, we must understand that what God has said will come to pass. What God has said will come to pass. Look at, if we read uh, uh, Matthew 24, verse 35, um, Matthew 24, 35, he says, heaven and earth will disappear, my words will never disappear. King James says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words, my words, words but my words will, will not pass away. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away. He says, but all that I have said will, will come to pass. We must believe that everything God said, God said the end will come. He said there will be end times. You know, he said, Jesus Christ said all these things. First of all, we must believe. For us to be prepared, what must we do? We must be, we must be sure and we must believe in our hearts that, look, Christ is coming. What he has said is going to come to pass. It's not going to change. It's not going to change because of anything. He is the word unchanging changer. He is the same yesterday and today and forever. So that's the first thing that we must know. That what we must, what we must understand that, look, what Christ has said, what God has said is going to come to pass. Then, secondly, we must understand the times. That persecution will come, and then we need to endure to be saved. We see that in verse 13 of our text. Verse 13 says, um, it says, But the one who endures to the end will be saved. After Jesus mentioned all these challenges that Christians will face, he said at the end of it all, he said what? He that endures to the end will be saved. We must understand the time. The Bible talks about the children of Issachar in First uh, Chronicles 12. Time may not permit me now. First Corinthians 12, verse 32. It says, it says, it says that the children of Issachar, they understood the times and they knew what Israel ought to do. We must understand the times. We must understand that this is the end time, and then we must be prepared for Christ's coming. That that we must be prepared for Christ's coming. Then also the um, that's the, the third thing that we should uh, also do to be prepared is that we must live a life of sobriety, considering the fact that Christ's coming will come when no one expects. We see that in verse thirty-six to thirty-nine of our text. Matthew 24, 36 to 39, it says, However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen. Not even the angels in heaven or the sun himself. Only the Father knows. When the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in the Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time Noah entered his boat. People didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came, until the flood came and swept them all away. This is the way to be when the Son of Man comes. He's saying that, look, we need to be, I'm saying that we need to be sober. Remembering the fact that, or having in, in mind that when Christ comes, he's going to take everybody on our way. Nobody is going to be ready for it. Or, oh, we know the time. The Bible will say that even the angels, even Jesus himself doesn't know the time that Christ will come. Only God knows. And they say, just as it was in the days of Noah, when the flood came and took everybody away, except those in the earth. See, that is the same way it's going to be. So if we understand these things, then we need to be ready. We need to be prepared. We need to live right. We need to serve God sincerely because we don't know the day Christ will come. We don't know the day the trumpet will sound. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, the fourth thing, I think that's the fourth thing now, is that we must keep watch. We must keep watch and be ready at all times, just like I've just said. In read verse 42 to 44 of our, of our text, Jesus Christ was encouraging us. He said, so you too must keep watch. He says, so you too must keep watch, for you don't know what day your Lord is coming. Understand this. If a homeowner knew exactly when a burglar was coming, he would keep watch and not permit his house to be broken into. <laughs> that, that's not true. You also must be ready all the time, for the Son of Man will come when least expected. Christ is encouraging us that the Son of Man, that Jesus Christ, will come when least expected. He says, if a man knew, a man whose house was burgled, if he knew when, the burglar will come, he would have been ready, he would have called the police on hand. But the burglar, the thief comes when nobody is expecting. See, that's the way Christ will come. So what happened? What, what, so what must we do? We, we must do what? We must be ready at all times. Ready. Let's live every day like it is our last day. Praise the Lord. Let's live every day like what it is our last day. We must keep watch. And then also, 
uh, I think I'm getting to the end now. We must hold fast our faith and defend it. Jude verse 3, Jude is only one chapter verse 3, it says that uh, uh, we should earnestly contend for our faith. Earnestly contend for our faith. Hold fast your faith. Your, we have seen that as a Christian, your faith will be, will be, will be challenged. Your faith will, will, will be seriously be challenged. Your faith will be challenged because, and once you know your faith will be challenged, you have to defend your faith. You have to stand for what is right in your office or anywhere you find yourself. You must stand for what is right. You know, temptations will come, times of compromise will come, but remember that, look, you are a child of God. You need to stand for God. You need to stand for God. So lastly, the last thing is that we need to do to be prepared is that let's tell others, let's share the good news. Let's tell others, let's share the good news. Let's share. You know, when you share it, when you tell people that Christ is coming, so it helps you also, you also, to keep, uh, to keep your, it helps you keep yourself on your toes. So I want to just uh, encourage you, uh, that's, that's, uh, I need to round up now. Uh, my time is spent now. Um, I just want to encourage you that it is very, very important for you to what, to understand that Christ is coming, is imminent. We are in the end times and, um, by the grace of God, it is possible to make heaven. Heaven, making heaven is not, uh, is not rocket science. It is possible to make it heaven. If we follow God's word and follow what we have said today, I know that heaven shall be our home. And by God's grace, I'll meet you there. So God bless you. And uh, uh, see you. Uh, hope to see you soon again. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Stay, stay blessed. Short exhortation. The speaker really, you know, uh, it, 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 within the limited time he was able to you know eat the nail on the head hallelujah one of the things i got from this message that is very key is that we must contend earnestly for our faith i don't know for us in nigeria i think we are i can say we are still enjoying you know the other time i was looking through my twitter account and i was scrolling and i saw that uh, uh, um a man was arrested in one of these western countries and do you know the reason why he was arrested he was wearing a t-shirt that says only jesus can save and so <laughs> has that happened to you in nigeria i mean <laughs> it hasn't happened here but because you are in nigeria or you're in the corner of wherever you are living does not mean that things are not happening out there people are really content this is the time and we have our own peculiarities in nigeria too we are really contending for our faith in these end times there are so many things that are worrying that are contending with our faith you know they tell you not to do this or they tell you to in fact they even force you to you know pick <laughs> some things that you don't want to do you know it, it's such a terrible terrible times that we are in but you know that's why we are here today to learn what the word of god has to say to us as christians because we have hope we are not miserable people we are not people that do not have hope no matter how bad it is in this end time god is there with us and that is why we must stand as christians because i can't tell you things will get better it's going to get worse it wasn't this bad some years back but today you know <laughs> you want to enter a toilet you know you, you now need to check very well you know you know what i'm saying so things are happening nowadays you know things are really going bad like you know we had stories in nigeria where uh, under 18 you know they are doing going for money rituals and all of that things are really very bad but as bad as things are it is not the time for us as christians to be dejected or be despaired is a time for us to be prepared and i know god is going to help us i don't want to be the one doing the teaching <laughs> i'm not the speaker for today i'm just a host so now right now i'm going to be um introducing pastor felix to us through the video profile right now i'm going to be sharing his video profile pastor felix is here praise the lord the devil has lost the battle glory to god so pastor felix i will make you a co-host and spotlight you to everyone uh, before you come up sir i'm going to be playing your video profile so please sir do not come off now okay sir so i'm going to spotlight you i'm going to spotlight you but then let me share your video profile okay that's pastor felix Tywo, you will let me know if this um 
uh, there's a sound. I'm going to play it for a few sec. Is that working? Sister Taiwo, are you there? Praise the Lord. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Can you hear me, sir, Pastor Felix? Okay, so I'm going to play your video profile now before you come up, sir. Thank you, sir. Pastor Felix Duyelemi is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He is the founding pastor of Christ Classic International Ministry, a ministry devoted to raising kingdom champions. He has authored over 15 life-changing, international acclaimed books and delivered over 10,000 speeches on different subjects. He's had degrees in psychology, science, education, and theology. He loves quantum physics and artificial intelligence. Pastor Felix lives at the moment in Ibadan with his extraordinary family where he impacts the rest of the world. He blogs regularly at his website. Ladies and gentlemen, join me with a clapping ovation to welcome Pastor Felix Duilemi. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Pastor Felix, over to you. I wanted to add, Pastor Felix, you didn't put that you are the conveyor of it. It's in you. It's in you, sir. Over to you, sir. I think. Pastor Felix, over to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. The network is really fluctuating. Okay, Mama. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't team that has blocked this program. I pray that the Holy Spirit will help us to uh, go home with um, key ideas that um, will help us to not just to expect the second coming of Jesus Christ, but to maximize our time before his coming. Uh, praise the Lord. Please, can you hear me? Absolutely. Yes, I can, hear you. You can hear you, sir. Thank you, sir. Great. So the, the first thing I want to say is at chapter 1, verse 11. At chapter 1, verse 11, the Bible says that this same Jesus will come back the same way that you have seen him gone. The same way he has left, he's going to come back again. So that's put to rest whether Jesus is coming back again or not. Is coming back again. The Bible says he's coming back again. Acts chapter 1, verse 11 says he's going to come and he's going to come bodily. Some people say, Oh, he has come and he's going to come in you know, the all, but the Bible says he's going to come physically. So we are going to see him coming the same way he left. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Talk about the end time. End time. You know, the Bible says that we are in the last day. Apostle Paul talked about it. Um, Apostle John talked about it. Apostle Peter talked about it. So when did the last day start? In God's eschatological uh, timeline. Uh, the last day actually began immediately after Jesus came the earth. In fact, uh, uh, Apostle Paul didn't marry and it, it Christ will come before the end of the 20th century. So when we say the, the last day, I don't want us to um, be feasted, uh, feasted about when is the particular time. You know, I, I, Apostle Peter was saying that some people scorn, even at that time, maybe, maybe 2,000 years ago, some people scorn the promise of his coming. Oh, he said his coming. Where is the man? I said that, I think it was uh, Peter chapter uh, 3. Uh, uh, so the, the, the people at that time already scorned the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now imagine, imagine uh, centuries after or years after, the, and yet Jesus Christ is not here. So if the Bible talks, a bit, I want to say that we are in the last minute of the last day. We are in the last minute of the last day. So uh, uh, that, that should make us to uh to live ready to live ready that jesus christ can come anytime because he said that nobody knows the time and nobody knows the hours when the son of man can come so everything we say will be predictive 
we can't be categorical. We can't be, we can't be categorical. We can't say, oh, oh, this is going to be the time. This is going to be the timeline. But everything we see, everything might be uh, sooner than we expected. Now, uh, uh, the, the first speaker talked about uh, uh, some of the things that will happen that will lead to the coming of Christ. He talked about persecutions of of obvious but i want to move into uh, the text of christ daniel chapter 2 daniel chapter 2 uh, next i had a dream and he forgot the dream and nobody could interpret the dream. And they wanted to kill all the astrologers or the magicians. And then they said, wait, don't kill them. I'm going to give you the interpretations of this dream. And so uh, um, let's look at uh, Daniel, chapter, Daniel chapter 2, verse 31. Praise God. If you are there, you could just uh, open to Daniel chapter 2, uh, verse 31. It says, you, O king, were looking at me. Behold, uh, a single great statue. Uh, 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 okay. Is it Daniel chapter 2, not chapter 3? Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 3. It's uh, verse in, now behold, a single great statue. Uh, uh, this image, which was large and of unsurpassed uh, splendor, stood before you and his appearance was awesome and terrible as for this statue his head was made of fine gold a uh, uh, breast and his arms of sliver the, the belly and the tights of bronze his legs of iron his feet partly of iron and partly of clay as we were looking a stone was caught without hands and he stuck and stuck the statues on his feet of irons and clay and crush them. Then the irons and the clay, the bronze, the sliver, and the ghosts were crushed together and became like the chaff from the summer threshing floors and carried away so that not a trace of them could be found. And the stone that was cut uh, without human hand became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Praise the Lord. That's a very powerful. Uh, Interpretation, but uh, time will not permit us to go into all of this. But the fact is that the king had a dream, and nobody could interpret that dream. But Daniel came by the revelation of God, and he was able to interpret the dream. Of course, this is just the interpretation. Later, uh, the king uh, Daniel gave the application of that. And of, of the first thing Daniel, said, the first thing Daniel said was, uh, 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 "God revealed to you events of the future." God revealed to you things to come. And he said that the sliver, the, the, the hands was made of, of bronze, and then the feet was made of iron and clay. I want to quickly say that the, the, the There were different, there was a time where we have the industrial age. There was a time where we have uh, uh, the agricultural age. And there was a time where we have uh, the knowledge age. And then we are moving into IT. We move to IT age, move into a different world, a different world where I believe that Daniel was able to peep into the future and was able to see the events that will happen at this present time. Uh, 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 the, 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 by their economic power, we've moved into where nation uh, then from economic power to political power, where where one nation dominate another nation through their political powers and strength. Then you move into entertainment. Uh, 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 I will call that the bronze where music was taking over the entire world. 
Now we are in the last, uh, the, the fourth part where the, the iron was made partly of clay and partly of iron, the feet. And of course, when you look at the interpretation of that, uh, of that uh, uh, dream, Daniel said the, it, it will be the kingdom, the last kingdom will be partly weak and partly strong, partly weak and partly strong. And that led us to what we are now, that led us to the realities of now. Uh, of course, you know that artificial intelligence has taken over the world. Uh, industries are shaking today because of the fury of artificial intelligence. So many things are happening today that the world did not prepare for. The world did not prepare for. It's, it's taking over. Uh, Google, they have to come out with their own chat, uh, uh, GPT, they call Bab. Uh, Amazon, um, Facebook, all of them are being destructed. The, the issue with artificial intelligence is that you can't even master it. As you are running after it, it's ahead of you. So what will the future look like? What will happen in years to come? What will be the nature of how are we going to relate with ourselves, say, 20 years from now or 40 years from now? Uh, 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 that, that is the realities confronting the entire world. Uh, and of course, when you study artificial intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence has weak artificial intelligence and strong artificial intelligence. Where we are now, with all the development in, in blockchain technology, with all the development in, um, in um, robotic engineering, uh, synthetic medicine, and all of that, all of these things are still within the framework of weak artificial intelligence. Hello, are you there with me? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We, we can hear you, sir. Absolutely, sir. All, all of these are still within the weak artificial intelligence. Now, we have not, all the things you are hearing of chat GPTs and all of that, they are within weak. So, and scientists are working hard to move into a strong artificial intelligence. That means that in the world of the future, robots might likely take over the, uh, of the entire world. Now, uh, 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 the developers are coming with what they call, what they call uh, uh, immortal minds, immortal minds, what they call uh, 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 nanotechnology uh, uh, immortality, where they, where, where they are developing an avatar, avatar that they can trans, translate, remove a brain to an avatar. That means that you can actually transfer your consciousness to an avatar. That means that an avatar can actually relate to another person while you are not there as though you were the one there. And now you, you see the, con uh, uh, the, the, the concept of augmented reality, um, missed reality, and now we have uh, what they call uh, telepresence. Telepresence is even different from Zoom. Telepresence is when you bring virtual person, uh, real person, and then you relay with that person virtually as if the person is with you. These are possibilities that is, is beyond human uh, calculation. These are possibilities beyond human, hum, human, uh, or human dreams. These are things you know, left in the realm of fictions. Now, these are the things that we are going to see in the future. And now, I, I know I was studying something they call no biological uh, body and biological body this morning. That means that what scientists are proposing is that a time will come that if you don't like your body, you can say, I don't like this body. I want to leave this body and move to another body. So they are saying that no biological body will be as real as biological body. And so the concept of immortality, the concept of immortality is coming in now where men believe that they will not die. Now, that led us into conscious, conscious artificial intelligence. Would there be a time where we have consciousness? And that's what science are experimenting about now, where robots will have consciousness. You know what they have now is simulations of human brain. But can we actually translate our brain to them and so they will, they will have human consciousness? So these are realities. Now, if you study, if you study uh, uh, Revelation chapter 13, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13 that the, the, the beast will carry so much wonders and the entire world will follow him. 
we are not saying that oh oh uh, um, the artificial intelligence and the realities of the future is going to carry so much of these things that is going to make human beings believe that they are God. Are you with me? It's going to make human beings believe that they are God. Now, science are coming up with what they call conscious uh, quantum consciousness. They are coming up with extensions of brain cells. That means that if your brain cell is 3 million, they can actually extend your brain cells to, to what is it called? To, well, two billions or trillions. And then they are coming up with the concept of artificial inseminations, uh, not just artificial insemination, where a woman can actually conceive without sperm. Now, now, if you look at that kingdom, the Bible says the fourth kingdom is going to be part, partly weak and partly strong. To me, it has a resemblance of artificial intelligence. And so, uh, 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 of course, Jesus Christ said, when you hear of works and the rumors of works, he said, the end is not near. That was when we have heard of works, we have heard of rumors of works and all of that. And then the world was actually expected that Jesus would come at that time, but uh, uh, it will not be works that will lead to the second coming of Jesus. It will be something close to rapture. It will be something close to rapture that science will actually move us to a point where we could actually we could actually believe that human being can be raptured. So, and then the Bible says, a hand was caught with that human hand that smashed the, 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 the feet of the status and then broke it into pieces. I believe that the end time is going to come in a way that the world has not, is not you know, the world did not prepare for. It, even the church did not prepare for, but it's going to be something amazing. And, and that, that and that left us as believers to be aware of season, to be aware of time, to be aware of where we are, to be aware of the future possibilities. Not only to be aware, because if you are not aware, the possibilities of the future will make you think that science is God. We make you think that technology is even stronger than God because of the event, because of some of these things that will be coming up. Okay? Uh, praise God. I just have to stop here today. I pray that uh, the Holy Spirit will help us, you know, to, to uh, find another time where we can discuss more on this event. But uh, suffice to say that the world ahead of us is a, is a huge world. It's going to affect you. It's going to affect people around you. And we have to be prepared, not just prepared for the second coming of Christ. We must use this technology to also bring many people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ before he comes. God bless you, Ma. Thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity to share this little uh, wisdom with your people. And I say, God bless you, Ma. And when Jesus Christ comes, you will find us working in him, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah, Amen. hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. More anointing, sir, in the name of Jesus. The Lord will continue to give you a voice. I have another seminar now. Okay. I have to watch it. I'm very sorry. Please, ma. I share. Okay. okay, sir. No problem, sir. Okay. We would have loved to ask you some questions, so, but you won't be here. Okay. Maybe we will send to your, we will send to your email, sir, so that you can ask okay. any question about your teaching. Thank you so much. All right, sir. Bye, sir. Okay, so we thank God for that uh, powerful uh, short time uh, from uh, Pastor Felix. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. One thing he said when he started, one thing he said when he started is that, uh, okay, Pastor Felix is not muted. I bet that means it. Okay. All right. So one thing Pastor Felix said that I would like to talk to us about is that he said, last last we are in the last minutes of the last days we're in the last minutes of the last days so we it, when we say we're in the last days in the in the end times we're actually in the last minutes that means there's no much time anymore all right so um he, he spoke a lot about artificial artificial intelligence ai that is everywhere now everybody is talking about it you know everybody wants to you know what it's all about so these are the things that 
well, if the the devil is using them for the negative, we can also unnest these things and use them just like Pastor Philly said when he was rounding off. We must unnest these things, this technology, to bring the word of Jesus to the old world, just like we are using Zoom now, and we're able to gather here to hear the word of God. Uh, it's a, it's an opportunity for us in this end time. So, Dr. Ayo, Dr. Ayo, sir, are you still in the house, sir? Let me see, Dr. Ayo Daily. Dr. Ayo Daily, are you still there, sir? Okay, I think Dr. Ayo is gone. Oh, I wanted Dr. Ayo to help us with our questions. Okay, Dr. Ayo is no longer there. So, uh, Brother Moses, kindly prepare to answer a question. And uh, Minister uh, Kayo Deadideji, by the grace of God, you'll be helping us with uh, questions. So, right now, it's time for questions and answer. But before anyone asks a question, I would like to ask a question first. We are only going to take two uh, questions because of our time. We're only going to be taking two questions by the grace of God. So it's time for questions and answers. So, but, but before uh, we take any question that will be coming up on the chat, Sister Elizabeth, please let me know if there's any question on the chat. Before that, I will be asking a question, Brother Moses, you will be helping us uh, with the answer, please. And, and my question is, we are talking about the end times now. So what do we now, uh, how, why is it that um, the more we are closer to the end times, the more we are finding messages like this far and away from our altars? Why is that happening nowadays? What do you think is the cause and what can we do as Christians in these last days uh, to, you know, okay. So Brother Moses, can you please help us with that question, sir? And if there's any other question in the chat, please, I would like to know. Ramos is please. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you hear me, everyone? Yes, we can hear you, please. Oh, great. So one of the things we need to look out for is we need to filter where those words are coming from. All right. In the book of Matthew chapter 24, Jesus made mention that Many will come in my name and they will deceive many. So many prophets will rise, false teachers and all. So if we look around us today, we will see that many false prophets, many false teachers are coming in the name of Jesus. Whereas they were not sent. Though Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 16, there about, he says, Some preach Christ out of selfish gain. Why some preach Christ truthfully? But all the same that the name of Christ is being preached. So the reason why we don't get to see these messages on the altar, coming from the altar all the time, is because we are carried away with the things of the world. Honestly, we are carried away. We want to amount to something. We want to achieve this, want to achieve that, want to do this, want to do that, that we forget. But he who has promised is not slack concerning his promises because he would definitely come back. If he would not, he would not say it. But for the fact that he has mentioned it, and the angel told them that this Jesus you see going up, we in like man has come back. So it may be today, it may be tomorrow, but it will definitely come back. So the reason why we don't find it on our altar is because most of those people mounting the altar and the pulpit, they are not called by God. So such messages, they believe that we push away their fortunes. But in Bible-believing churches, you get to hear this message over and over again so that we'll prepare ourselves because nobody knows when he will come, but he will definitely come. And I pray that when he comes, he will meet us prepared without spring, without wrinkles and blemishes in the name of Jesus. I pray the Amen. Lord will keep us standing strong even to Amen. the end in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Thank very you much. so I much. Sir. Yes, yes you, you, you've done justice to it, sir. Thank you so much, sir. All right, so uh, we still have time for a little one minute for questions. If you have any questions, can you please indicate with the uh, with the raised up hand on the the icon with the raised up hand? Can you please indicate? And if you are preparing your questions for maybe outside this meeting, we are dropping our email, derevelationsministry at gmail .com. You can send us an email, and we will respond to your question in the next forty eight hours. So because of our time. 
If there's no questions for now, Sister Taiwo, do we have any question in the chat, please? So that I'll roll out from questions and answers. Our time is fast spent. No, ma. Okay, so if we have any question after it may be not related to this topic, we can please send it to the email being pasted in the chat box right, right now by our virtual assistant. God bless us all in Jesus' name. So at this point in time, I would like to say thank you to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. God bless you real good in the mighty name of Jesus. I hope you've been blessed. But before we go, but before we go today, it will not be okay for us to say that uh, we have come to hear about the end times, about uh, the rapture, things that will happen even in these last days, without talking about the fact that if you are not yet a Christian, if you have not given your life to Christ at any point in time, it's, it's not going to be right for us. So if you are here today, you've not at any point in time given your life to Jesus, or if you if you feel that you've given your life to Jesus before, but you are not no longer standing the way you should be standing if you if you if you ask yourself a candid question that if the rapture occurs today that will you be able to make it without rapture if you are not able to answer if you if even if it's not rapture you know everybody has a time when god will call us home if you face god today for example will you be able to boldly say that i i have i have lived a good life and that God wants to, you know, God can use me for his glory and God can ask me to go into his kingdom. If you are not bold enough to say that, that means you have not surrendered your heart to Jesus or you are not living right before God. So if you are if you are ready to give your life to Jesus today, I don't want you to in indicate. I just want you to say this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know I've sinned against you. I repent of my sins. Please write my name. Please wash me clean with your precious blood and write my name in the book of life and give me your Holy Spirit so that I may begin to walk uprightly before you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have said that prayer with me, I congratulate you and I pray that the Lord will make you strong and make you to stand even in these last days in the mighty name of Jesus. If you do not have a church yet, I want you to please join a Bible-believing church, a church that preaches the old truths of the Bible. Because one of the things we learned today is that, of course, we have so many churches and yet we still have so many, you know, sins is rampant around us because most of these churches, some of them, one of the signs of the end times is that these men... Some of these so-called pastors are not really children of God. And because of that, they have, uh, you know, misled so many people. So find a Bible, a church that teaches the old truth of the scripture, not the church that we say, well, we obey this one, we don't obey the other one. And if you don't have a Bible, please get a Bible. And if you need our assistance to, you know, get to uh, let you know some things that you can do now that you are a new Christian, you can send us an email. Our email is being pasted in the chat box right now. To the glory of God. And also, we also encourage you to please pray and communicate with God. That's the way to grow and read your Bible every day. The Lord bless you. Real good in the name of Jesus. So right now, we are going to be taking our announcement to the glory of God. Very quick one. And also to encourage not just those that are just giving their life to Jesus Christ. If you have given your life to Jesus Christ before and, uh, you know, just somehow you find out that you are not, no longer living the way you used to live. You are no longer burning for God. The fire is no longer there. I would advise you to please, you know, retrace your step today because we can never say when this call will come. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the first announcement I have here is that the book Rapture, Last, last year, the Lord, uh, no, I think uh, 2021 ending, the Lord gave me an instruction that I should write a book and that I should publish it the first, not later than the first quarter of last year. And to the glory of God, that book has been published. We were able to even share and dedicate it at our last uh, meeting uh, at Beraka Worship. I'll, I'll still be talking about that November last year. So the book is still available. Since we are talking about the end times today, you can still get that book, The Rapture. 
uh, with the link being pasted on the chat now, it's uh, available at Lulu Bookstore online. It's available at Bookteria online. You can get the book there. It's very cheap, maybe about 500 Naira Nigerian money. And on Lulu, maybe less than, I think less than uh, one or two dollars or so. You can actually get the book there. The link is being pasted in the chat right now. So our next upcoming coffee, worship, and Bible study will be in December by the grace of God. We will communicate to us when it's time, the date, and everything to the glory of God. Now a big one is coming. Baraka Worship 2023 to the glory of God. This ministry majorly, the primary assignment is a singing ministry. We sing the, God, the, the, the gospel music only to the glory of God. So God gave us a mandate that every year we must gather people together to praise his name. And you know, when praises go up, blessings comes, uh, comes down. So this year again, we are going to be having our Beraka worship in October. It's, this will be the fourth edition. The first two editions were virtual, but now that COVID is gone and gone for life, we, last year we had, the, for the first time we had it on site and we had people come join us uh, for, for the Beraka worship. And it was a wholesome time in the presence of God. Those that were there can testify to the glory of God. So, but this year's own is the fourth edition and it's going to be unique. We are going to be having Having both virtual and on site because of some of our people that are not staying within Nigeria. So, if you are within Nigeria, anywhere in Nigeria, we expect you to please be here for the Raka worship is going to be taking place in Lagos to the glory of God. And um, uh, the, uh, for those that will not be able to be here physically, for those of us outside Nigeria, we are going to make provision for the virtual one, for, uh, like now, right, like something we're doing right now, we are going to be on Zoom, we are going to share the links with you, but you are going to have to register, everybody will have to register, we share the links later, the flyer will be out later in the uh, early uh, August, by the grace of God. And um, to the glory of God, we also do movies, uh, so we also have a movie titled Rapture, uh, take off a rapture movie. The link is being pasted in the chat box right now. Take off a rapture movie. It's on YouTube. Our YouTube channel is uh, Adekemi A Adedeji. You can actually find it. It's also being pasted there. The link for the movie is there. It's about rapture. It's very short. It's less than 15 minutes. So you can watch it with uh, your family or, and you can share it with others. We are reminding ourselves, we are trying to, you know, alert everybody that we are in the last days and we must live ready. So go and watch Rapture, take off the movie on YouTube. It's now over 9,000 uh, view on uh, YouTube. Go check it out if you haven't checked it. And then we released another movie sometimes earlier this year, Furious, is also on our YouTube channel. And then another one is coming by latest next week, Wednesday. The title is Win, 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 Win. And we will all win and finish well in Jesus' name. So watch out for it on Wednesday. We will send out. That's why we want your email. Kindly drop your email with me on the chat directly to me, not on the not to everyone for privacy's sake, for your security. Send it directly to me. We need your email so that we can forward these things to you as soon as they are ready. Also, kindly follow us on all our social media platform to get updates about all that God asks for us per time. Our platform is being shared on the chat box right now. Note that our music, our gospel songs are on YouTube, Reverb Nation, Gospel Minds. They're also on Audio Mark. All the links are being pasted right now by our virtual assistant to the glory of God. Sister Taiwo, I hope you are pasting these links. All right, so the greatest announcement of all is that Jesus is coming soon and we must be prepared in the name of Jesus. That's the greatest as announcement I have for us today. Once again, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless every one of us in the name of Jesus. All my friends from outside Nigeria, from the UAE, from Cameroon, and all my people within Nigeria, God bless you, sir. God bless you so much. We really appreciate you. Without you coming, how would we have been able to hold this program? We just want to say thank you. So many people sent me messages yesterday that they also have church programs and all the programs clashing at the same time. But we thank God that we are able to attend now. And so we will be uploading even this um 
meeting on our YouTube channel. So we'll be sharing it with us later in case we, we can share it with other people so that they can also listen to what we've learned today. And God will bless us all in the name of Jesus. So finally, now I'm going to be calling on our minister. That's my dear husband, Minister Luakara Dedeji, to please give us the closing benediction. And uh, I'm going to uh, make you a co-host now, sir, so that you can unmute yourself and then lead us in the opening prayer, uh, in the closing prayer. Let me spotlight you, sir, before you, you come up. Okay, so I've, I've spotlighted you. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Okay, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 I'm clear now. Yes, you are, please. You are clear. You are clear, sir. You are off. We can't hear you anymore. This and the blessing of the Lord will. Yeah, the blessings of the Lord will be with us forever, Lord, in the forever morning, in Jesus' name. A quick one. Um, I feel I just have one or two points um, into this. You see, the Bible says, um, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. Um, just according to our two speakers, um, and the Bible says in hearts and in joy, in the last day, the Lord will pour his spirit upon all flesh. And if wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. We've talked about the knowledge of the Bible, the gospel, about um, rapture, and then Felix talked about artificial intelligence and what um, the world is really turning into. And if Christ, if God says, I mean, even the Bible made us to understand that I would pour my spirit upon all flesh, which means believers should also be equipped with these facilities of artificial intelligence and all that. Because if there's a generation, if there's a set of people that are there in the generation, it's what they are fed in, or let me say the tools that is being presented to them that would really engulf their mind. I don't know if I'm communicating. What I'm trying to say is that if Christians are not equipped with for example, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology, and so many of these. How do we communicate Christ to these people, to a generation that is lost? And then, I mean, the other part of the world, I mean, home believers, we're able to reach them before Christ and before we believers. My simple um, two cents is just, um, we believers should be equipped with this because even God says, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. And the Bible needs to understand that the children of this world are wiser in the generation that you know light. The Lord bless us in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just want to say thank you, Lord. We receive the spirit of understanding. We receive grace to prepare for this. We receive the grace to live according to your will and in holiness. To meet you at rapture in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, can we share the grace in fellowship, everyone? Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, love of God. and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. rest and Amen. abide with Amen. us Amen. now Amen. and forever. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness Amen. and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We are so grateful. Thank you, everyone. I can't make sure everybody say thank blood. you. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. So, we bye. are talking out now. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.